damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 335. It's the last week of April of 2023. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things that we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. So much to talk about. WWE is introducing a new world heavyweight title. They took the big gold belt. And they stuck that big WWE globe logo over the center of it, like a something I would create in uh, WWE 2K 24 3. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the new world heavyweight title. It's going to be uh, a new champion will be crowned at the no longer King Queen of the Ring show, Knight of Champions in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Wow, wow, wow. What do you think about bringing back uh, the World Heavyweight Championship? Um, well, I guess we're going to we're going to give this brand split thing a try again, huh? We're uh we're going to get real serious about this so both brands need a need a world title again. Um Yeah, it's it's fine. Like it doesn't bother me. I do think it it's one of, it's a strange thing to be like we can't beat Roman Reigns because he's too important and therefore the belts are too important. But the belt isn't so important that we we're afraid to introduce a second world championship to somewhat devalue the belt that Roman has. Um so I feel like that's maybe a little bit of a of a of a contradiction, but and also, it doesn't solve the problem of whatever show Roman's on will still have a part-time champion. So it doesn't solve that issue either. Um, but hey, you know, I guess it's a belt for guys who won't ever get the real belt. <laughs> you know, it'll, you know, this is the belt that guys like Seth and and uh and and whoever can 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 wrestle for and win. So there's that. There is, in fact, that. So does Cody get the consolation prize here? <laughs> Win the newly created title? That would be really funny to me because that's like it completely flies in the face of both the original story that they told about him needing to win the the WWF heavyweight championship that his father never won. Um, and yeah. also it flies in the face of uh, he was cheated. Not that he's ever like brought up on television how he got completely screwed and <laughs> should be owed a rematch on those grounds alone. He's all like, ah, you bested me, sir. Mayhaps we will grapple again sometime in the future. Uh, even though he got uh, royally uh, screwed over in the storyline. But that's kind of just par for the course um, because all the announcers and everyone talk about Roman Reigns as a you know, dominant generational champion, uh, which is fine, except that the story of every one of Roman's matches is that he uh, constantly needs help and interference to win, which you would think would be the heat, you know, being that he's a heel is that he, he professes to be this generational unstoppable, uh, you know, monster. But in reality, he's a cheater who cheats all the time. Um, But we don't, we don't do that. We just, we just, (laughs) He both cheats all the time, and the story is that he's the greatest champion and the most unstoppable champion of this generation at the same time. Uh, So, yeah, it would be really dumb, I think, to have Cody win it. But I also think you can't not have Cody go after it or talk about going after it because then it immediately devalues the belt. So, I mean, I guess you can draft Cody to whatever show Roman's on and keep just keep him away from the belt. But like, uh, at least in the next couple of weeks, I feel like you have to have everybody pay lips. Or if you want the, the new title to mean anything, you have to have everybody, including Cody, including Brock, whoever, Omas, Seth, Finn, whoever, like everybody's got to say they want it. And then maybe you can pull, pick 
you know, pick some people to get away from the from that belt by putting them on the other show. But at least in the immediate, you can't just have anybody go, well, I want the real belt that Roman has, not this new one, because then you're immediately devaluing that. So it's an interesting uh, little conundrum that they have 100% created themselves. Yes, yes, it is. So the draft kicks off on Friday Night SmackDown this week. Are you pumped for the draft? No. <laughs> Uh, How could anyone possibly? Yeah, like to me, the only thing that ever made sense or made the draft show kind of fun is when they would have a guy from one show wrestle a guy from another show. And then that got the winner got a draft pick for his show. Which isn't great, but is better than just everybody goes into a pool. And so people have to redraft people that were already on their show. Like it's just. It just doesn't. Yes. Just, just they do it in the least interesting way possible for a concept that is already <laughs> not that interesting. <laughs> that they do. They continue the build to WWE Backlash this week. They added a Raw Women's title match to the show. Bianca Belair against Io Sky. We knew that match was coming, but we didn't know where or when. It is now set for Saturday, May 6th in San Juan, Puerto Rico at Backlash. They also added Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest in a street fight to the show. I think everyone figured out that Bad Bunny was going to be wrestling on the show, but his third career match will be as a singles match. I'm not sure we saw that coming. It is a street fight, so Ray can get in there, but I think everybody expected Ray and Bunny against Priest and Dominic, and instead we are getting a singles match with the uh, the street fight stip so they can smoke and mirrors it up if they want to. But uh, still no announcement of Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. Not sure what's going on there. My thought was that, that match was going to be on SummerSlam, but Trish is just flying her all every week, so she's like a regular character, so it sure <laughs> seems like that's going to be added to the uh, to the backlash show at some point. I don't know what they're waiting for. Uh, Cody and Brock's on that show. It's going to be headlined by uh, the Bloodline against Owen Zane and Riddle. Seth Rollins wrestling Omos for some reason. Rhea Ripley is going to kill Zelina Vega on that show. Mm-hmm. And um, on SmackDown this week, we have the WrestleMania main event rematch, the tag team title match, where I assume Kevin and Sammy will, uh, their reign will end uh, before one single successful title defense. Uh, that's kind of the build for Backlash. Uh, what do you think so far? Yeah, I don't I don't think any of it's horrible. Um, we kind of talked about this a little bit last week. It just doesn't feel like a, a hot program. And a lot of that, I think, is it's it feels like a hangover. <laughs> build it's like we've got stuff hanging over from wrestlemania or in the case of doing more stuff with uh bel-air and damage control a hangover from last year's SummerSlam, um and just doesn't uh, doesn't feel that you know not to say there's nothing fresh on the show yeah i would imagine the the bad bunny and uh and damian priest will be a, a spectacle and Said, I think it'll. I think this show in a in a bubble, in a vacuum, whatever, will be a a very fun show because it's in front of a crowd, in front of a, a crowd that doesn't get live televised wrestling of this, you know, av- of this level ever. So I'm sure it'll be a really fun show to watch. But as far as like being really invested in anything, yeah, I guess I guess the uh, the one question mark, as you pointed out, is is the Trish and Becky thing. I guess they could hold that off for the Saudi show in May, but that's that's a long time where you have to, I guess Becky's, you know, kind of off TV, so you gotta you can bring her back uh, you know, and, and then start like they're really start ramping it up, I guess after Backlash and after the draft or whatever, but yeah, that's that feels like it's spinning its wheels a little bit, so yeah, like I said, I don't I don't, I don't hate anything um, but uh nothing that great my only thought my only other thought is that uh i think they're doing seth and omas i think omas is gonna win and they're gonna do omas versus roman in saudi arabia that sounds great (laughs) 
I mean, great in a certain in a certain sense. I don't expect it to be a, a five star classic. No, it'll be uh, hopefully. Hey, if it's as good as the match Brock had with Omos last month, then I I will have no complaints about it. That is a very Saudi Arabia match. <laughs> it's a Roman spectacle. Versus God damn it. Yes. Yes, it is. So, former WWE writer suing the company this week. Mm-hmm. Let me uh, let me pull up the facts here so I don't get any of us sued. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this writer named Brittany Abrahams, um, who was terminated allegedly for uh, taking home a WrestleMania chair last year. <laughs> Uh, she was told to uh, she was told it was OK. Then they allegedly fired her for that. So but uh, so she sued. Um, she's she's it's a wrongful termination suit, basically. But she's saying after she complained about um, multiple instances of offensively racist and stereotypical jargon used in WWE scripts. There is a lot of very bad things <laughs> in court documents here. There are a lot of scenes with Bianca Belair um, doing um, racial jargon and offensive stereotypes that the suit alleges that Belair objected to. Mm hmm but that a white male writer insisted on writing for Bel Air. This is a time period where Apollo Crews was doing that overtly racist character that they had him doing, where he was carrying a staff to the ring and speaking in an accent and Mm -hmm. that sort of thing. There are uh, court documents that state that in a WWE Slack that it was uh, suggested that uh, Reggie now scripts in NXT um, should dress in drag when he was paired with Carmella and uh, as like he would have been like a tag team partner when uh, now New Japan wrestler Shane Thorne uh, was briefly even a crocodile hunter gimmick. Um, <laughs> they, they were going to have him. <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue. He was. I like, know. I, I think know. It made, it's just so silly. <laughs> it made main event once, I think. Um, I don't think it ever made SmackDown, but uh, Shane Thorne was a guy that uh, then that Vince uh, confused for us in theory. <laughs> um, just to show how how on top of it uh, he really is. Um, so according to this lawsuit, uh, Shane Horn, Shane Thorne, and the Crocodile Hunter would hunt Reggie, and then Reggie would like uh, be held in a cage, but then it's always escape, and they do this wily coyote roadrunner thing where Shane Thorne would capture. Reggie mm-hmm. and put him in and put him in a cage. Instead of hunting crocodiles, he would hunt people. They also the, the, the real hammer here is that a white male writer allegedly pitched a storyline where Mansois of Maximum Male Models would have had a secret. They were doing a love triangle thing with Mansois, Angel Garza, and Aaliyah. And this white male writer, at the time the head writer of WWE programming, suggested that the secret that Mansois could be hiding would be that 
he was behind the 9-11 attacks. Mansois, who would have been six years old on September 11th, 2001. Ooh. Well, a lot of bad stuff in this lawsuit. Yeah. You know what? L- reading that litany of things, all of them, you know, sort of racially charged, to say the least. Uh, I guess my 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 major thought is I guess this writer, uh, Miss Abrams, that's uh, that's you know brought the suit against WWE. She must have started after the Tazawa Ninja stuff, because otherwise that would be in here too, right? Because I'm like, wait, there's more racist stuff you Pro- forgot about in the last <laughs> two years of WWE. <laughs> Probably so. Probably so. Probably uh, so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the yeah the the big headline grabbers were the man Mansoor Mansoua did nine eleven, uh, and the probably the the Bianca Belair where it appears. I mean, ba- based on the claims in the lawsuit that uh, that this writer corresponded directly with Bianca Belair, who said that she was uncomfortable with it, that she hated saying it, didn't want to say it, but that that whatever the specific lines were, I think she has some examples in the lawsuit uh, uh, were that she, basically it was in there every week, whether she wanted to say it or not. So, um. You know, this this is kind of one of those things that comes up when every time something like that, something like racially insensitive or something that sort of goes over the line happens on WWE television, there will always immediately be a statement that was very clearly written by Vince McMahon <laughs> that uh, says that the talent agreed to do it and the talent has input on this and, you know, wouldn't if the talent said they weren't comfortable, they wouldn't do it. Um, but that's as we all know who live in the real world who have a boss um when your boss asks you if you're comfortable with doing something a lot of times people say yes to that even if the answer is actually no so look this is all alleged this is all pending but it was a uh you know uh, if you're looking for precedent is there precedent of racially insensitive and you know you know, uh, m- racial minorities uh, being treated poorly across WWE and WWF television. Uh, I don't think that's a secret. So n- none of the claims here are particularly outlandish, I think, to anyone who's watched wrestling for any length of time. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was just like a good a laundry list. I, th- I think that's really what hit me more than anything. It's like, man, she's hitting us with all these examples and this is all stuff just in like, the last two years <laughs> like like you you'd like to think that that wrestling has at least evolved past being like that low low class and insensitive and inappropriate but you know it's at the end of the day it's still run by a lot of very old very rich white people <laughs> so this this sort of thing's probably going to keep happening um, in in different ways. So like we said, officially everything I've just said is alleged because this is a pending lawsuit and nothing has been proven in a court of law. But yeah, that's that was a lot. That was a lot. And it was pretty, uh, pretty wild to read it all kind of laid out that way in the lawsuit. Indeed. AEW. AEW Dynamite this week. Not a strong episode of the show. <laughs> Not a strong episode of the show. As they continue their builds, double or nothing. Roger Strong has joined the company. That was a surprise. I think everyone assumed that he was still in WWE purgatory, but <laughs> I guess he's out. And he's hooked back up with uh, his old friend Adam Cole while uh, Bobby Fish sulks somewhere by himself. Doing MMA kicks in and the air. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's got a, a a heavy bag with CM Punk's <laughs> face taped to it, <laughs> a, a cutout of CM Punk's face taped to the top of the heavy bag. And he's just kicking the heavy bag. You know all the all the upset, you know all the upsets, and all the all the people, all the feelings that got hurt 
potential lawsuit threatens punches thrown and the only guys who've lost their jobs out of all of this punk AEW drama are a steel and Bob fish. Vandus thing. We'll touch on punk punk Jericho meeting here in a moment. I've heard conflicting things about that, by the way. Um, but dynamite this week. Yeah, I hated the show. Um, I I liked the start of it. I liked Orange Cassidy and Bandito, mm-hmm. and I don't think I don't think Dax and Double J had the best match that those two could have had. But uh, I get a kick out of watching Jeff Jarrett work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's, he's supremely talented and is one of the best 55 year old guys that's ever been in the ring. Um, so that's cool. And then I feel like that show drove off a cliff <laughs> and then they're going to do. It looks like they're going to do the four pillars four way at double or nothing next month. Anyway, after a week and a half of storylines where there was going to be a tournament to decide who wrestled MJF. Now there's a tag match next week. And if Darby Allen and jungle boy beat MJF and Sammy Guevara, then it's a four way. So I wasn't uh, enamored with AEW dynamite this week. What did you think of this program? Yeah. Uh, I just to echo what you just said. I thought there was some, some good wrestling on the show. Really, really liked the opener. Probably not the best match that Orange Cassidy and Bandito could have together, I would think. But, you know, it was fun. It was a fun match. And to your point, uh, Jared's very good. Dax has a very, you know, has a solid, you know, Dax is a very good singles wrestler, too. Um, My personal Mr. Dickhead. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Dickhead did a, you know, did a did a good job with uh, with Jeffrey Jarrett. Enjoyed that. Um, yeah, the the thing is the main, I guess by default, as we were talking about this off the air, but by default, it get I guess as as far as most TV time allotted, the two main storylines are yeah. the elite versus bullet uh versus uh Blackpool Combat Club, which I mostly like. Yeah. I didn't I didn't really love what they did this week, but I it was fine. Like I didn't I didn't hate it. Um Right. And and then the other thing is this MJF four pillars world title thing that they've been drip fe- drip feeding since uh, before WrestleMania, I think. So at least at least over a month, they've been they've been, you know, teasing this and like two weeks after the last pay-per-view, they started. Right. So the end of March, the end of March, it's yeah, it's been about a month. OK, so um which is fine. You have a lot of time to kill. You can, there's no, there's no theoretically, there's no problem with doing that, but what they've done the way you just laid it out, the uh, we're teasing a four way. Well, actually it's going to be a tournament. It's going to be a singles match. Oh, uh, Sammy wins by, you know, beats both guys by cheating. Ah, we're giving you the two heels and the one heel is going to lay down. Oh, but wait, we're going to change it. And if, the baby faces can win a tag match. Then it'll be the four way that we were teasing four weeks ago. It just feels like you're spitting your weirs. It feels like the way WWE tells stories uh, a lot of times and not like the good WWE <laughs> storytelling, not like, you know, <laughs> WrestleMania season where they get their ish together for six weeks. WWE storytelling. It's just, it's just like, it's not a type of wrestling storytelling that I enjoy where you go when you, everybody kind of knows or at least has an idea of the direction you're going. And then you're like, Oh, Nope. Just kidding. We're not, we're definitely not doing that. Oh, wait. Yes, we are. Like, it's just, and it's not, it's not twists and turns that are interesting. You know, it's not like somebody turned heel and somebody turned baby face or somebody they're doing an injury angle or something like, it's like, no, they just, they acted like they were going to screw you. And ultimately they're not. And you're going to get the match that I think, you know, the rank and file AEW fan will be excited to see, but I, yeah, the way they've gone about this is just so it's very sports entertainment. It's very WWE and not what I want out of AEW, which is predominantly just long, good matches. (laughs) And, and uh, that's, they, they've, they're trying some different things. They're trying to put on a wonderful variety show. I understand (laughs) <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's just been a swing and a miss with a lot of it. So 
uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not crazy about the MJF four pillars feud. Um, and that gets, like I said, the most or at, at you know, at least the second most television time of uh, of any program in AEW currently. So it's when something that takes up that much of the show is not clicking. Uh, that's a recipe for a tough show to watch sometimes, especially like you said, that that second hour. The first hour was going along just fine. A lot of wrestling, a lot of fun matchups. And then we just kind of took a little bit of a dive in that second half. Yeah, this week's uh, Rampage airs at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time <laughs> after they announced on their television. They announced on their television show last night that it would air at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then uh, it was revealed on Thursday. Actually, no, six thirty now. Mm-hmm. This is, this show is absolutely cursed, <laughs> absolutely cursed. And at least they're adding another hour or another two hours of television every week. Mm-hmm. So we have that to look forward to next month. Well, the good news is there's never any sporting events on Saturday evenings that would that'll mess that'll wreak havoc with the Saturday show's time. I'm sure. Right. Owen Hart tournament is coming back. Gonna crown the winners at Calgary on what was originally announced as a house show, but I guess is now gonna be one of their Saturday night specials. Or Saturday the new Saturday night collision shows, rather. Mm-hmm. Chris Jericho and CM Punk allegedly had their meeting. No one has any details about this. <laughs> um I saw someone today speculating that they did not in fact meet. Hmm. which would would be strange. I thought it was obvious that Jericho was not at Dynamite this week. Jericho is on a Fozzie tour. Mm-hmm. Um, how that fits into this story, I don't know. But um, Jericho is there to be like the uh, the liaison between Punk and the locker room and uh, trying to make everyone okay with the idea of CM Punk coming back to work there, I suppose. And uh, we don't know. This is one of those things where if any details leaked out immediately, you could point the finger at one of like three guys as to who is leaking information. (laughs) And so it seems like something where no details of this meeting should ever get out. But but also it's wrestling, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? So it's it's both surprising and yet, maybe a good sign that no details of this meeting have leaked out. Uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I uh, that that is maybe the most surprising part. If it went poorly, especially, you would think everyone would have ran to their friends to tell them, to, you know, to say what happened and how it was the other guy's fault, right? Um, you know, Mister Dickhead well... uh, lost his podcast, but I'm sure. <laughs> You know, uh, his good friend Nick Hausman or somebody would have uh, would be would be talking about the punk would have the punk details, and and you know yeah. Jericho has a has a few friends in the uh, in the wrestling uh, journalism world I hear, so uh, I'm sure I'm sure we could have gotten Jericho's side if it was just like a complete fiasco. Uh, I feel like we would have heard that at least maybe, but I don't know. To your point, maybe it would just be so obvious who was leaking it that people are a little more tight-lipped about this one. Well, did we bury the lead here? Did I c- completely forget the biggest story in wrestling this week that CM Punk showed up backstage <laughs> at WWE? Yeah, I thought I was, yeah, I thought we were maybe waiting to to tie it in here, but yeah, that was a, uh, I, I think I, neglect, sure. I neglected to put it in our show notes also, so. But sh- Chicago, WWE's in uh, Chicago on Monday for Raw. Guess who shows up at the show? CM Punk. Mm-hmm. And he goes backstage and he uh, he talks to the Miz and there's video. I don't know how real it is, but video of him talking to Tamina Sn- Snuka out in the parking lot. And then everyone reported he went in and he smoothed things over with the Miz backstage. And he briefly spoke with Triple H and wanted to know if he could talk to him. And Triple H said, basically said, I have to clear it with my dad first. <laughs> and then as, and he asked Nick security. Khan. Yes. The security asked Pug to leave, and he left. But this is, uh, they allegedly, uh, Jericho and Pug allegedly met last Friday. This was on Monday. 
at Raw. <laughs> CM Punk showed up at Raw. This guy, <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just fun. Um, yeah, this he's a he is above all else. Whatever his flaws, whatever his attributes, he is a messy bitch who loves drama. And uh, yes, and I thought, yeah, I I feel like there was like a supplemental story about like he was flying back from somewhere and was on a flight with some some WWE folk who invited him to the show. So so he was in Florida doing commentary on uh whatever MMA promotion he does commentary for on the UFC streaming service. Uh, Lonnie Donegan's uh, mixed martial arts, I believe. Yes, correct. And so apparently that's Jericho, I guess was in Florida over the weekend. And so that's where, why they chose to have that meeting then and to have it in Florida. Mm. But yes, then allegedly WWE, he was on a plane from Florida back to Chicago with a lot of WWE talent who may or may not have asked him to stop by. <laughs> Doesn't seem very likely to me, but all right. I mean, I believe that he was on a plane with a lot of WWE talent. I don't necessarily believe that uh, that was the impetus for him stopping by. Mm-hmm. But what do I know? Let's say who's who's friends with him? <laughs> Who has he not cut out of his life? <laughs> Right. Maybe maybe we know he likes Bailey. We mm-hmm. know he likes Pam because he, th- he threatened to suplex Pam on her head mm-hmm. <laughs> a couple years ago. And she's tight with AJ. So I would th- maybe some maybe some of the women. Did he and did he and Kofi have a falling out? They used to ride together. He just he just cut him off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you worked th- if you work there, he stopped talking to you. Yeah, right. So, so. Uh, and you know, to be fair, when you're suing people, uh, you know, I, 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 whatever. But yes, that was. I thought that was. <laughs> it was very fascinating, and then I just envisioned a scene of Paul Levesque, Bruce Pritchard, and William Regal just stumbling over themselves, trying to be the first one to tattle to Vince that uh, that he was backstage. Um, their see. legs all tangled in a cloud of dirt. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm tripping each other up. Paul tries to run, but <laughs> Bruce is tied his shoelaces together. I accidentally play leapfrog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, accidentally, absolutely, accidentally leapfrogging one another, trying to get <laughs> to the red phone. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. I I believe uh, uh you, your 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 site's own Dave Meltzer said that WWE thinks it's because he wants to come back after his his AEW deal is up. Which I mean, WWE always thinks people want to work there, so that's not like breaking news necessarily. But you know, he just, just wants. Uh, and hey, it's a it's a public way of showing him of him making amends. Maybe you know, maybe he's been in anger management training, and this is uh, this is part of his recovery is is making amends with with Paul and with Mike Bazanin. Maybe so, maybe so. We can hope. We can only hope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wrestling is a lot more fun when he is, in fact, the meanest man in the world, though. <laughs> <laughs> It really is. <laughs> it's a lot more fun. Uh, Mercedes Money dropped the IWGP Women's Title on the biggest show in Stardom history this past weekend. She has agreed to more dates with at least one more date, but I believe more than that. With uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling going forward, she's going to be wrestling in California uh, on Sunday, May 21st. I think that's the date. Yes, that's the date. And let's see here. Uh, Naomi slash uh, Trinity Star, I think her name is going to be, is uh, going to debut on Impact. Perhaps already will have by the time this airs. Uh, or maybe uh, on Fridays. 
I, they have a taping maybe Friday, I think. Does that sound possible? They have a pay-per-view Friday? I don't know. I definitely remember <laughs> hearing Friday. I think I read Friday in the original. Uh, I think it was PW Insider who reported this. So they definitely said Friday. So Yeah, they're taping TV uh, Spring Slugfest in Chicago this Friday and advertising a major surprise in Chicago. Uh, but obviously it's uh, it's going to be uh, the former Naomi, apparently. So that's kind of what's going on with those two who left uh, left WWE uh, about this time last year. And uh, I'm not surprised that Mercedes is staying in New Japan at least for a while. Um, as long as they can pay her a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she likes wrestling relatively infrequently and wrestling in Japan and um, and going over there and doing stuff over there and doing a little bit of stuff here for them. And that's all that's all good and cool. Yeah, getting to pick your spots and generally not having to adhere to like a four and a half minute, uh, you know, U.S. television <laughs> with commercials uh time limit to your matches is probably nice and obviously she has other other uh irons in the fire so to speak with her uh whatever acting she's doing and 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 everything else so yeah good good for her uh trinity they did like a weird viral like as far as i know roh AEW never acknowledged it but she was front row at athena's match over wrestlemania weekend and was like mean mugging her in the front row. And so I expected that she would show up in ROH at some point, unless this, it was just these two shooting their own angle. Um, Cause I don't think Athena is going to show up in impact. So maybe she has flexibility in her impact deal where she's also going to show up other places. Or maybe, like I said, maybe that was just them teasing something for down the road because they want to have a match together. But uh, yeah, hey, good, good for her finding, <laughs> finding a place. <laughs> yeah, and we'll see, we'll see what she can do. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not like uh, saying that facetiously or anything. Like we don't really know what what uh, Naomi slash Trinity uh, would be as a wrestler with uh, without wrestling under the auspices of wwe we don't know we don't we just we don't know is she good we don't really know <laughs> you know she's a good athlete mm-hmm. can she wrestle is she still a uh passable wrestler a year later uh we don't know we don't know any of these things we'll find <laughs> out at some point yeah i mean she's right. she, she she was always very popular despite not being like a particularly heavily featured act um on the show and she did have the really cool entrance and everything but yeah good for her it, you know she had, like you said she has a chance to to do it her way for for a while and and see see how that goes so good for her all right we've uh covered quite a bit here is there anything else you want to get to no i think that's about it we kind of gloss glossed over the the roddy strong debut but uh yeah good good for that guy <laughs> life's too short to spend the last full-time wrestling years of your life in NXT. I think that's I think that's fair to say. He's he's definitely a top 10 wife guy in in, in, in wrestling now. <laughs> he's not anywhere near Finn Balor's level, but he's a top 10 wife guy for sure. Now he gets to work with his wife. He gets to work with his wife. I don't like Adam Cole being tied to him on screen right now. Feels like you're trying to do something with Adam Cole, mm-hmm. and uh, Adam Cole, I think, should be his own guy. I don't think he should have. Uh, I don't think he should be one of the fourteen thousand factions in this company. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I understand there's the the natural, obvious connection there, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. Let's let's keep Adam Cole his own thing. Yeah, to your point, he would stand out. By not being a guy with 18 other guys who come down and get in brawls with him every week on on Dynamite if he was if he was kind of by himself for a little bit. 
and again, you can always go back to that. Kyle O'Reilly is still, I think, a, a while away from coming back. So uh, it would be you. You always have time down the road <laughs> to uh, to to put them back together as a trio if you want. But maybe, yeah, maybe see if uh, if Adam Cole, especially because you're you're doing you're obviously wanting to do more with him and Britt as a pair on screen based on the the reality show and everything. So maybe yeah maybe he doesn't need to be paired with Britt and with with Roddy at the same time that dastardly bcc this week <laughs> they attacked long time long time elite member uh Takeshita mm-hmm. with a screwdriver uh he's been in he's been in the elite for uh about 7 days maybe mm-hmm. well they tried to recruit him they did like 6 weeks of angles and <laughs> in 90 seconds here they tried to recruit him he seemed kind of interested but then not cool with the screwdriver stuff so they turned on him and uh and bloodied him yeah yeah moxley sold a little bit of that angle that's rare (laughs) john moxley is also much like roman reigns he's uh he's a a badass heel who never sells anything Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a that's a pretty good gig if you can get it. Being a badass heel, badass cool heel who doesn't doesn't have to sell. He did sell like a heel in the angle they did this week, so that was a uh, a positive development, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think if you're going to be the indestructible monster heel, you need baby faces that maybe elicit sympathy. <laughs> From the fans, and while I think a lot of AEW fans love, you know, like and love the elite, I don't know if they feel like sympathy for them getting beaten up, you know, in a traditional like white meat baby face way. So I think that also is maybe playing a part in that. But but yeah, he bumped around quite a bit for him this week. So maybe once you get the the full real elite back, when when Hangman comes back in the next couple of weeks, you can. And you can get things rolling there. All right. Well, we have that to look forward to. So, until next time, everybody, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. <laughs> Richard and Paul Levesque accidentally leapfrogging each other. (laughs) (laughs) Total total three stooges skip. (laughs) Spread out. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh, what a beautiful image. (laughs) I don't think I put that over quite as much as it deserved on the show, but it was fantastic. All, all, all in very ill-fitting suits in very different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Pritchard is Pritchard's is ill-fitting because he's big fat guy. Yeah, and then uh, Hunter Hunter's is like perfectly tailored, except for like the uh, the very top of the neck and chest area, <laughs> where it's like uh, it's very loose now because he used to have shoulders and a chest. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. (laughs) Bruce with like his dress shirt unbuttoned down to his navel. (laughs) Here we go. Got it. Well, we out here. We out here. Baltimore Ravens got themselves a quarterback in principle. (laughs) <laughs> it's very exciting very excited the the Hopkins trade it's just being floated is fascinating <laughs> too I mean he's another 30 year old yeah wow, but yeah 
we'll see if how much these guys are like uh, catching uh, <laughs> sidearm <laughs> sidearm floaters. Yeah, I mean, I'm but, excited to have a wide receiver who's uh, above five nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah you know that could that could be a a fun a fun uh experiment <laughs> see how see how that goes but uh yeah <laughs> no. we know historically a few things about i've known the baltimore ravens for <laughs> almost 30 years uh yes and they cannot draft a wide receiver and they never will draft a wide receiver uh so Correct. You got to trade for him or sign him. And hey, yep. trading for pe- names that people have heard of. Are they still what they were five years ago? Probably not. But hey, they're not 36 either. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, Eric DaCosta, the uh, current GM, he uh, inherited all of Ozzie Newsom's um, weaknesses and none of his strengths as a talent, a talent <laughs> evaluator, apparently. Ozzie also could not draft wide receivers to save his life. Mm-hmm. However, in his, in his first draft here, uh, he, he chose two Hall of Famers in the first round. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure anyone is... There. I'm not sure anyone has ever had a draft like that before. Ozzy also did the thing where for depth, offensive, defensive line type guys for depth, um, he would accumulate dozens of those compensation picks you get when you're when a free agent of yours signs with another team and they like sandwich you between the third and fourth round or between the fourth and fifth round or whatever. And he would get uh backup offensive lineman and defensive lineman with those picks mm-hmm. and they would always pan out. And, uh, and now uh, this year we have zero of those picks. First of all, <laughs> secondly, we've had those picks the last few years and instead of um, finding quality depth pieces for the lines, um, we've had to go into free agency <laughs> to sign offensive linemen. And uh, we have a our, our sixth offensive lineman, our backup offensive lineman. They, in fact, uh, paid. <laughs> they, <laughs> he signed a second contract. And is being paid like a starter. So instead of having um, cheap depth pieces, we have uh, had to dip into free agency. So now, not only do we not have depth, we don't have many wide receivers. We have to sign or trade for them. Uh, we don't have many depth on the offensive or defensive line. Uh, also, our salary cap is totally wrecked. So that's nice. Yeah, no. It's... <laughs> so what you're saying is everything is fine, and it always will, and it always will be. Yeah, yeah. The good news is the New Orleans Saints have proved every year for the last decade that the salary cap is totally fake, and and you can uh, get around it. So we're we're really going to test that theory this year with. Lamar's new deal and Odell Beckham and if they get uh DeAndre Hopkins. So <laughs> will be it will be it will be a happening as Girl Lamont once yes. said. As long yes. hopefully, I mean, what are the odds that every single linebacker and cornerback gets hurt again this year? <laughs> You know, what's the odds of that happening again? Seems pretty, pretty low, but <laughs> Cause, yeah, cause they're yeah, all 32. Ha- <laughs> yeah, it's happened every year for the last decade. Um, I try to keep on keeping on.